welcome to another game review. Now, if you don't already know, I'm working on a new camera right now. Uh, it cost a lot more than the previous one, but the previous one I got for Christmas one year. My old camera suddenly just stopped working, and I tried everything, didn't work, so I got myself a new camera which I'm using now. But that is not the reason why I'm, I'm doing this video. I'm doing this video because, where is it? There it is. For those of you who are into Dragon Age, I just completed Dragon Age Inquisition. I've been waiting for that game for months and I watched the trailer and it was awesome. The game itself is amazing, it's absolutely brilliant. You know, it topples Origins and number two easily. Now what we know, um, what we knew about the game before it came out was Morrigan was going to come back and what we saw in the trailer was Varric. So Varric's coming back and, he, and they were both correct. Morrigan is back and uh, Varric is back which is awesome. Now what we also know is that Hawk returns. That is true. Hawk comes back as well and he works for you because you are, as the game suggests Inquisition, the Inquisitor. The plot is simple. There's a huge hole in the sky, as the trailer um, made us guess, called the Breach. Now, you are a character, obviously. You're the uh, protagonist. You are the only one that can close the Breach and stop whatever evil is happening. The Chantry has fallen to pieces, Templars and the Templar and Mage War has broken out, and it's up to you uh, to put the world back to right. Um, you have you have characters. However, you can recruit up to uh, nine nine characters, which is awesome. And each and every character design is brilliant. Not to, not just the characters, but the environment as well. The environments are spectacular and beautiful. It's an open world. In the first game, you can only travel to other parts of Elden with this map, which is fine. Number two. You only had to travel around Kirkwall, a city in three marches, and it was a map with a day and night cycle. That's not the case in Inquisition, right? In Inquisition, you get to travel all across for a... You have Ferelden and Orlay. You can travel to Orlay. This is so cool, and Orlay is so, is so different from Ferelden. Uh, when I went to Orlay, I'm starting to think, how the hell did they conquer Ferelden and occupy it? for a long time. How? They're kind of like French nobility in, um, what was it called? Uh, uh, you know, the uh, French stuff. Um, Rene no, Renaissance? No, that, 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 that's, that's Italy. Uh, I can't remember. It, it might come back to me, but the, the fact is they're like old age French people, you know, masquerades and balls and other stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, that's um, you get to go to Orlay as the Inquisitor. Now, you know, in Origins, where you get to pick your race, you know, that comes back. However, there's a new race added. You can be a, um, a human, uh, an, an elf, a dwarf, and a canary. You can actually be a canary. It's so cool! It's just awesome. Cassandra is back from the second game, of course. And, uh, yeah, obviously, Liliana is back, which is awesome. She's like the spy master of the Inquisition. Cullen is back, and he's like the commander of the forces of the Inquisition, which is, which is great news. And it's fantastic. Now, you're probably wondering, well, where's the hero of Ferelden if he or she lived? Well, the hero for Elden does get mentioned quite a few times. Doesn't make a personal appearance, shame, but does get mentioned, which is awesome. <laughs> As I said, it's an open world game. You get to fight a, a bunch of enemies. And, and actually, if you're wondering, well, how do you go to other, how do you like go to new um, areas? because you actually can. You can go to other areas and the landscape of the whole thing is completely different. It's beautiful, absolutely incredible. Well done on that. They have this kind of system, kind of this PowerPoint system 
where you first go to the Hinterlands, and I'm pretty sure we all know what the Hinterlands are for those who have played Dragon Age Origins, because it was viewed on the map of the first game. You go to the Hinterlands, and it's massive, it's huge. Uh, that, that's the whole thing about an open world. I mean, all the areas are, are amazing, beautifully done, and huge. Okay. Now, there are certain quests you can do, uh, holding the hinterlands, which is basically establishing Inquisition camps. So you can travel from one camp to another in a split second, say from one end of the map to the other, without actually running all the way through, because that's really annoying. And I was, um, I, I was laughing when I found out I could do that. Because before I was running from one side of the map to the other, which took bloody ages, and then I uh, found out you can travel from one camp to the other. Anyway, when you establish a camp or complete a certain quest or close a rift, because the breach isn't the only thing to worry about, there are rifts appearing all over um, Orle and Ferelden, probably all over Thedas, and you actually have to close them. Uh, you get two waves of demons if you, complete, if you finish off all of those demons you can actually close the rift and you get a power point for it or two depending on the difficulty or depending on how late in the game it is or depending on your level these power points allow you to go into other areas to do a main quest to access it and they allow you to um, uh, uh, do quite a bit of things now <clears throat> For some side quests, for like for some areas and other stuff, you have to get a certain amount of power points in order to do that. What you got to do is like build camps, close rifts, um, you know, just just that kind of stuff. It may take some time, but believe me, it's worth it. It is worth it. It's so cool. I actually wanted to explore all of the areas. Unfortunately I didn't do that but in my first playthrough. I'm on my second playthrough now and I hope to do that but if not it's totally fine. Flemeth comes back so don't worry about that. Flemeth is back. <sighs> so that's uh, pretty much all the good things about the game I can uh, think about. Now despite how amazing this game is there are a few flaws. For example, in Dragon Age 2, if you wanted to import your game from Origins into the Dragon Age 2 world, so it influences a bit, all you had to do was import your saved game. Easy. With Inquisition, it's a bitch. You have to link, you have to create an Origins account, I already had one so that wasn't an issue for me, and you have to link it to your Xbox, and, and, sin, and since they, um, uh, uh, an account is automatically linked there you can't link your account to your origins so you have to call up you have to um, do an an internet chat with it with an EA advice support person and they link the account for you and then and then you have to go onto this website called Dragon Age Keep so you can recreate um, whatever story you'd like in origins and number two in something called a tapestry I like that but it took me about three hours to get my account linked. It took about three bloody hours. It's just so annoying. When I finally, finally got it linked, I did my tapestry um, to what I would, to what I did in my previous origins, and um, you know, two game. <sighs> Once that was all done, once you pick your your race, your class, and everything, it it actually off it actually gives you the option to import your saved game, your your custom world, which is awesome. I did that, and it is actually pretty cool. For example, if um, if Alistair's made king, if you made Alistair king in the tapestry, he actually makes a cameo in the game, but only if you pick a certain path. Uh, you'll find that out later. If Alistair and Honora were to joint rule, they make a cameo, which is great. If Loghain lives, he makes a cameo. Um, I think Alistair makes a cameo regardless of whether that party took him from, whether he was exiled or a, a Grey Warden or King. Unless he died, of course. I'm not sure about the exile part, but the Grey Warden and King part, I'm certain about. If 
you're a warden, romance Alistair, Liliana or Morrigan, they will mention the warden and mention how much they love them and miss them and we actually find out where the warden has been or where he or she is. Because number two, we were left with a question, where is the warden, where is Hawk? We find both of those questions out, so don't worry about that. Also, with Hawk, you can actually customise him or her if you uh, do the tapestry. And, and again, you have to link both accounts to make a custom world, which actually is annoying, but believe me, it's worth it. It's worth it. Okay, you can customise Hawk to how you did them in your game, which is great. Uh, I think the only thing... Yeah. Hang on. No. I, I was going off point there. If the Warden agreed to the ritual, or if Alistair did, Mor we actually meet Morrigan's son. Okay? Because at the end of the game, at the end of Origins, if you did the ritual, you find out she's pregnant, you know about that. And we actually, the Inquisitor meets Morrigan's son, which is awesome. Now, what I do know is that if Alistair or if the Warden did the ritual with the Morrigan, if, only if Alistair is a Grey Warden, apparently they can meet and talk about Kieran. That's the, uh, that's, um, his name. Kieran. Nice name. Nice name indeed. We find out what Flemeth really is. Okay, now, we don't, in Origins, and in number two, we were confused. We're like, okay, Flemeth's a cool character, but who is she? She speaks with great wisdom beyond her years. She can turn into a dragon. Who is she? How does she, how does she live this long? Why does she speak with such wisdom and in riddles? We find out why. Well, the riddle part is probably just her. Hmm. Anyway, yes, romancing. Uh, your companions is back. Um, it's actually different this time because in number two and in... In the Origins, it was kind of like a point system, more like a game sort of thing. In this one, they've removed the point system completely. They either approve or disapprove, and they don't tell you how much buy. Certain so, quests can, uh, uh, you know, become available as you romance them. Now, for my first playthrough, I romanced Cassandra, and yeah, it was good. It was good. Uh, I'm romancing jo Josephine as an elf mage, and believe me, it does work. If you want to romance a certain character, but not sure what race to pick, please research and look it up before you do anything. I will say that there's, this character, there's certain characters that only go for their own gender. So be wary of that. But other than that, st it's still cool. The Grey Wardens... Yep, I mean, you can't have Dragon Age without the Grey Wardens. They've been in since the first game, and they've been in Origins, Awakening 2, and now in Inquisition. So they've been in every single Dragon Age game, so you can't... So I don't know. I, I don't know what is it with the developers. I mean, by now we all know who the Grey Wardens are. But yeah, they work into the plot. That's uh, part of the reason why Hawk makes an appearance. It's awesome. Hmm. The decisions you make, actually, in the tapestry, actually influence the game, obviously. Here's another example. If, you, if you're in number two, and you supported the Mage Rebellion, right? Cassandra mentions that Hawk supported the Mages and wouldn't agree to become Inquisitor. That's why they were searching for Hawk and Hero for Elden, so they could reborn the Inquisition and make them the Inquisitor. However, I doubt my Warden, personally, would become Inquisitor, because, well, we, well, in, in the uh, circle of Magi, I actually saved the Mages. I, I didn't kill them all, as the Templars wanted me to do, I saved the mages, plus in all my dialogue that actually um, made a reference to it, or whenever I had a chance, I supported the mages. So, I don't like the Templars. I did, however, side with the Templars in, in my current playthrough, okay, because you need either the mages or the Templars to close the breach. Now, I know there is massive spoilers, but I did put a spoiler warning at the beginning of the video, so do watch at your own risk. 
I mean, in my previous playthrough, I, I went with the mages. So I've seen both outcomes, I've played both uh, missions, and I have to say, the Templar, getting the Templars is harder than getting the mages, but it is cool. It's just as cool. It's awesome. Now, there isn't, now, the enemy, I will not spoil anything, but I will say he's just as evil <laughs> as the... Well... Actually, no, I'm not going to spoil anything because it is awesome. How you are able to close risks, because you close them personally, I will not say, because it is... It's actually not bad. Now... I, I mentioned the flaw with the whole linking accounts, importing your saved game. There is another flaw. The hold position. Now, in Origins, if you wanted your party to hold position, they, they just did. I, I never tried to hold my party's position in number 2 because I never needed to. In Inquisition, you tell them to hold. It doesn't fucking work! So there's no point. It doesn't work. Tactical view, I never used anyway, and I completed it uh, without using it once. I've completed all three games without using tactical view because I don't need it. Some of you may want to use it, and that's totally fine. But for me personally, I've never had to use it. I've never needed to use it. I just didn't, well, well obviously, want to use it. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Is there any more flaws apart from those two? I swear there was one more. Just can't. Oh yeah, your characters die way too quickly. They are weaker than in number two. It depends on how. It depends really, but to be honest, I find them dying way quicker than any of my other characters in any other game. It might be due to the level they were on or something like that. I don't know, but for me, they were weaker than anyone else because they died quicker than number two, which in my view was pretty quick. <laughs> there, are, there is a benefit, however. You know in number one, you had to cast a spell of revive. Same thing with number two. In this one, all you had to do is go up to their body, hold down A, and they're revived. That's fantastic. They have removed healing, however. Healing made, they have removed it. And uh, here's another flaw. You have eight potions, right? And uh, that's um, the standard. Your party members can use them without you having to take control and make them take one. They can use them of their own free will. You can change this, but it's, it's really, it really annoyed me when I was a warrior, because what if I needed one and there was none left because you greedy fuckers took them all? Really? Really? So yeah, as I said, open world, brilliant and beautiful, uh, the, the main plots are, main quest is very cool, it's interesting, some of the side quests, unlike in number two, they weren't a drag. Okay, most, okay, most, if not all, are very enjoyable and very good. I mean, this is, this is just a fantastic game. It's, it's much better than number two, and it's better than Origins. That's what we were hoping for. We were hoping that Dragon Age Inquisition was going to be better than Origins, and in my opinion, it definitely is. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that agrees. My rating for Dragon Age Inquisition, this is, a, this is one of my favourite games ever, one of the best games to come out in 2014, so I'm giving it a perfect rating of 10 out of 10. It may have had some flaws, but I, I can easily overlook them to, to, to the magnitude of this game. It's, it's, like, not, it's like so much bigger than, than um, Origins. You can travel to another country, Orlay, you can see what all the fuss is about because Orlay was mentioned in both Dragon Age Origins and in Dragon Age 2, but now we can actually see it for ourselves. It is marvellous. And you as the Inquisitor, you're in charge. Hawk works for you. Morrigan basic works for you, basically. Unfortunately, you can't control either of them, but that's fine, because in some instances of the game, they fight with you. And that is so cool. Now, what I would like to see 
is the warden come back if they're still alive that is something I want to see because if you romance as I mentioned if you romance Asta Liliana Morrigan they mention the warden with great affection if they're your friend uh, um, well I will say if Liliana died by the warden's hands she will hold a grudge against him or her not exactly hard to hard to, hard to um whatever if you when you import um, when you do a the tapestry on hawk on on drainage 2 if you mention that he romanced isabella or Fenris or whoever he mentions them with great affection he mentions anders and everything whether he agreed or, or disagreed what anders did you know destroying the chantry i agree with that that was that the way anders destroys the chantry brilliant it was so cool Talk to Barak, and he mentions Hawk's, Hawk's friends and other companions and other stuff like that, if you do the tapestry. Now, Dragon Age Keep itself is quite fun, quite cool, and yeah, it's, it, it, it's awesome. You can import any, you can import the entire opposite to your warden if you wanted. That's how good it is, that's how flexible it is, it's so cool. So yes, Dragon Age Inquisition is a great game, so much better. It topples every single Dragon Age game I have ever played. So thank you very much for making a, an awesome game. Thank you. And let's hope that if there is a next Dragon Age game, which I hope there is, um, it will be hard to topple, it will be hard to beat. That's all I'm saying. Thank you very much for watching and... Um, yeah, if you haven't played Dragon Age Inquisition yet, if you're a Dragon Age fan, I am, I recommend it. It is so good. I mean, I barely, I barely pulled my, myself away from playing a second playthrough. That's how good it is. So thank you for watching. And, um, yeah, I shall see you all later.